What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News. And as I promised, I would cover the undercard of the Manny Pacquiao and Lucas Matisse fight, which was lit. Um, Carlos Canizales versus um, uh, Lin, Lin Ben, Lou Ben, right? Uh, Lou Ben is a bronze Olympian, you know, and this was his second fight going out for the championship. And it was an awesome fight. You know, it was back and forth. But at the very beginning, I seen what it, which they call um, Carlos uh, Canazales. They call him CCC, right? Uh, I could see his punching power was thudding. And he was a lot powerful, a lot more powerful than uh, Lou Ben. Lou Ben did have, he showed that amateur pedigree. But he also showed that, uh, he, he sh look, he tried, man. I mean, it was one of those fights where if it wasn't for the punching power, I feel, and the, just the pinpoint accuracy, accuracy from the right hand from uh, CCC, uh, I think that it would have went the distance because it was the end of the 11th round, you know, but, you know, when he was stopped, but it was before that. Um, Canizales, you know, he proved that he's a champion. And then the guy's undefeated. He's like 20 0 and 16 by KO, you know, and I got to address this too, okay, let me stop right there, CCC, Carlos Canizales, um, Jose Uzcateki, um, even Edwin Valero, all these guys are from Venezuela, so I got to address, Venezuela is a place, man, where people kind of overlook, you know, everybody was looking at Argentina, you know, where you had Sergio Martinez, and you had, um, uh, uh, El Chino, which was uh, Marcos Madonna. Then you had La Machina. Of course, he was on the undercard. You know, so Jesus Chavez was another fighter from um, Argentina. But I gotta mention that Venezuela man has has some hidden sleeping giants in there. You know, and it's proven it. You know, I know. You know, rest in peace. God bless the dead for Edwin Valero. But the guy was twenty seven wins, no losses, no draws, and everybody was knocked out. He knocked out. 27 people and he fought 27 people a flawless record you know despite how his life was his record was perfect um Uzkateki has only two losses and one of the loss was from a disqualification from him actually knocking a guy out which was Andre Durrell and then the next fight he got he knocked out Andre Durrell again so you know it dude it's some beasts in Venezuela I must add that I gotta address that and um and people need to just start waking up, you know, because Jose Uzcategui, um or Uzcateki, or however you um, pronounce it, he is a beast, you know, and he has heavy hands like all these fighters, and they all have high knockout ratios, right? You know, um, Jose Uzcateki, his record is like 27, two losses, 23 of them by knockout, and his only other loss was he was just outpointed by uh, Matt Carabal. So the dude is a beast, you know, these guys are all beasts. So that was a very intriguing fight. And uh, Lou Ben, sadly to say, you know, they had to take him out on a stretcher for, you know, for medical reasons. You know what I mean? Because they wanted to see if he's okay. And that right hand, then CCC, which is kind of Zala, started working the body. That was smart. You know, the first time he dropped him, I believe it was in the seventh or eighth round. He went right back to the body. So he invested in the body. And, you know, that set up the knockout, I feel. Because if he just went out there and started headhunting, especially with an Olympian, with the pedigree of Lou Ben, Lou Ben would have found a way to adapt. And Lou Ben was landing his own punches now, too. So it was a back-and-forth fight. It was just, you know, uh, I think it was the experience. This was only his second fight, Lou Ben. And honestly, I don't see how he was able to do that, you know, because uh, a lot of guys that are ballsy enough to do that, like Lamachenko. Lamachenko, you got to remember, he's a two-time gold Olympian. That means you have to be a special fighter to ha to have those privilege privileges, right? So I don't think that applied to Lou Ben, and it obviously showed last night. You know, and he fought his heart out. Um, but he landed a lot of good shots himself, but you could tell he tried in front of an Asian audience because you know, um, when Pacquiao comes anywhere in Asia, he's promoted. So if you're on the undercard and you're Asian, you're supposed to represent and he tried his best to represent. And, um, but he came up short because the guy was just too, too, too much for him. 
You know, he you know, he was landing too many shots. You know, he made small adjustments in there, you know, and I'm going to tell you something. I love exciting fights, okay? But I understand the reality of exciting fights. The toll it costs someone else for our entertainment and amusement. You know, we have to take into consideration these boxers put their life on the line. And the and the beating and the punches that Lou Ben took and absorbed last night is the worst type of damage that you could ever take. See, it's one thing to get knocked out early. Boom, you're out. You're spared almost. Because the guy had, you know, Canazales had punching power anyway, and I knew, wow, when his punches would land, they would land with a thud. You know what I mean? You could tell. You know, when Lou Ben landed his punches, they weren't so much. You know, they were snappy. They were quick. They were sharp. They were accurate. But they didn't have that thud that Canazales' punches had. Okay, so him getting knocked out early would have been a spared moment. But that didn't happen. He took punches throughout. And those are the punches that when fighters, when their adrenaline comes down, because adrenaline's a mother, okay? When your adrenaline is up, you know, that's that chemical in your body that that gives you energy or in temporary energy that you have, okay? Um, when that goes down and then the inflammation, okay, starts, you know, you could catch brain swelling and you might fall into a coma and you never wake up. If you do wake up, you're a vegetable or something like that. You know, either way, those that's tragic. You know, so I don't feel that Lou Ben should have been in there that early, but he did try. Um, and it was, you know, you only had one round left because this was at the end of the 11th round. And, and you could tell the punches that were landing, it was just off of the punching power and the um, um, accumulation of those shots. Okay. So that's the problem with that, you know, uh, and that's the worst way you want to take a beating like that. Cause it's very dangerous taking those many shots as he took, you know, but again, for our amusement, it was a very entertaining fight. I take nothing away from Lou Ben. I just think he should have, they should have waited to his fifth fight or something, get him in there with someone less seasoned, you know, then um, CCC, okay? So then you had Jack Ventura and on the other bout, and he fought a guy named um, um, Ortega from Mexico, and it was a knockout, and it was a late knockout, okay? You know, and it was stopped, and, um, and you know, um, Jack Ventura is, you could tell, it was similar to the fight with CCC and uh, Lou Ben. Uh, he was a counter puncher. They were two southpaws in there. That was important, you know, to address because you know it's uh, it's always something special when two southpaws gets in there. You know, it's like two opposites of opposites. You know what I mean? Like two lefties get in there, you know, and, and make a nice little puzzle piece, right? So, um, but you could tell. Uh, Tempura, his um, El Capitan, they call him, his punch and power was definitely harder and it, and it made a greater effect on him than it than vice versa, than Ortega, you know, and um, Ortega, of course, is another fighter, tough Mexican fighter, take nothing away from him. His nickname, I believe, is the Indio. So he was representing, you know, Mexico and he came up sharp, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, they went back and forth that, you know, um, Ortega did fight. You know, similar to Lou Ben, because he landed his own shots and made uh, Tempura really think about running in there, you know, because at first when Tempura, uh, Tempura countered, that bothered Ortega badly, you know. So, you know, and what th this is the worst thing a guy, a fighter can do. Hit a fighter and hurt a fighter early. Ask Sugar Shane when he fought Mayweather that, hey, I can hit this guy. Oh, it affects him. I got this. The only problem is you you fail to realize that you could have a long night or a disappointing night if that fighter is experienced enough to adjust. And Ortega did adjust to that um, that sneaky left, and or really is that right hand, that right hook that um, Tempura threw and hurt him with. So 
you know, that's why it lasted as long as it did. And it did, you know, in later in the round. I think it was the last round, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, but it was a good fight. Two stoppages, actually three stoppages, because you know we all know what Manny Pacquiao did in round seven, right? So, you know, we've already covered that. You guys haven't checked out that video, check that video out. Um, but also, man, keep in keep in mind that what I mentioned earlier about Venezuelan fighters. If you haven't heard about Jose Uzcateki, look him up, you know, on YouTube and things like that. I'll think I'll try to find some links and put them down there and show you some of his highlights. Because, you know, he was knocking guys out. He's been knocking them out. Um, James DeGale ducked him recently. So, yeah, he's avoided at 168. I wish he was at 160. That's my only thing. Because someone like Uzcateki coming to 160, you know, if if he can even make 160, you know, um, if it's healthy for him to make 160, I would love to see him at 160. You know, because 168 is, eh. 160 is a lot better than 168. But he is a beast up there. You know, you do have your own champions and, you know, your own sleeping giants and your noticeable names at 168 at the super middleweight division. But, you know, uh, Uzkatek is definitely a guy you want to check out. And, you know, of course, Edwin Valero, he was a whirlwind. He's He was like the Tasmanian devil from Venezuela. You know, that's what I think about when I think about him fighting and his, his fighting style. He was a hard punching guy, you know, and um, I want to add this to that pot. Speaking of Manny Pacquiao, he did come to spar Manny Pacquiao at one time, and then they were really impressed with how aggressive this guy was, you know, in sparring. I just would love to see it, you know what I mean? Because a lot of those guys don't record or they didn't record those fights, right? Or those sparring matches, just like, you know, you'll never see Triple G and Canelo when they sparred years ago, you know? which would have been vital for, you know, before they fought the first time because we could see what differences in the adjustments that Canelo made or whatnot. So um, because he definitely did and he changed that whole style up, you know, and, and, and you know, but anyway, I don't want to get through too far off the beaten path. But uh, yeah, definitely check out these guys. Of course, you know, Carlos Canizales, you know, knocking out Lou Ben, stopping him, you know, and he's another undefeated fighter from Venezuela. You know, so you guys look out for these guys because they're going to be a force to be reckoned with real soon. And hopefully you can take a look at these guys. But anyway, that's me wrapping it up with the undercard. You know, appreciate you guys for watching. You know, leave your comments below and uh, please subscribe. You guys have been counterpunched. Peace.